Okay, so this is going to be a voiceover. Uh, so once we have our Linux uh, server uh, open up, what we're going to do is install MediaWiki. Uh, let's make sure that we are in our, you can see our PFSense, our firewall has an internal and also has an external. So we want to make sure that we get that up and running before we open up the Linux server. As you can see, the Linux server has an internal network. All right, once the firewall is up and running, we're going to to open up uh, the Linux server. And we're gonna let those two open up. Uh, you can also do right now, you can take a snapshot before we do any editing uh, or any installation. So, Go ahead, take a snapshot, save it. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to save it while it's in the open run position here. Uh, it doesn't matter at this point, but you can do it just to have a backup if you do mess up down the road. Uh, we're also going to open up uh, Kali Linux. Uh, this way we can use a web browser to get into the media wiki to do the last part of the configuration. So here we can log into our Linux server. Uh, make sure you log in your password. First thing we want to double check is make sure we have an IP address. In this case, uh, it does not have an IP address uh, from a firewall configuration. So we're going to do sudo DHC client and we're going to type in your password. And then we're going to do IPA. You can see we got a new IP address by the uh, firewall. Uh, we're here trying to ping Google or ping 8.8.8. .8. As you can see, we have no um, packets coming back. So that means that uh, it's con it has an IP address, but it's not connected to any of the internet. So now we are going to open up Kali and we're going to check see what we can do to connect it to the network. As you can see from our firewall, we're able to ping Google and we're also able to ping the um, Linux server. Go ahead and see if we can ping Google again. We can't. So the next few step here, uh, we're going to log into Kali and we're going to check out the firewall configuration. We'll open uh, the internet browser or Firefox. 
and we're going to type the IP address of the firewall, which was 10.0.2.30. I'm going to add a do a login. In this case, we're going to check out our firewall rules, see if there's anything wrong. This is the WAN, this is the LAN. Uh, in this case, it should allow it, uh, but let's go check the uh, DHCP leases to make sure that it's showing up. As you can see, it shows up um, from our Kali and also a Linux server. So let's go back to our rules. We are going to have to check the LAN. Uh, it doesn't have the internal, like that LAN net, it should allow it. But it seemed like it didn't allow all of the LAN, uh, internal IP address. So in the next few steps here, we're going to add that. So it looks like we can ping the Kali machine and we can also ping the server, which is the 10.0.2.30 uh, is working. So the internal network is making communication. It's just making communication to the external. So we're gonna go down to, go up to firewall rules LAN and we're gonna make a copy of this LAN net here, which is the second one. So we're going to make a copy. Uh, it's going to pass through the LAN IPv4 any protocol. And this uh, source, we want to do the single host or aliases. And this is aliases is the internal host, which we already created already from earlier video. And we're going to, looks like everything's good here. So we're going to go ahead and save it. And then we're going to apply the changes. You see how this shows all the IP address? Uh, the LAN net should have shown or allow it, but did not. So we're going to, to allow this specific one, uh, the this specific network. Once it's saved, go back to the server. And we're going to try to ping Google now. As you can see now, the ping works. So it was a firewall configuration that we need to add the internal hosts with all the IP address there. So now once the firewall is working, our servers can enable connect to the internet. Um, we can start the installation. We go ahead and see if I can make this a lot bigger. So you guys can go ahead and See the commands that I'm make I'm doing. So again, just Google ping Google to make sure we have uh, internet connection. And we can start, uh, check we have the IP address. So this part, this here, we're just going to take some notes. So this first part, we're going to do a zero app install SSH. Just make sure we have SSH open uh, and install, which now we do. So 
Now this next part here, we are going to start looking at some firewall configuration to make sure that uh, we have open ports. So it's sudo UFW status. Uh, the status here is showing that it's active. Uh, we're going to do uf ufw.h slash h to look at the help options. In this case, we want to look at uh, the UFW status um, number. It shows active. So it means that the firewall is up. Uh, there's no ports open. So we need to go ahead and open up some ports. So we're going to do sudo wf allow ssh. Uh, this rule allows um, port 22 SSH into the system. As you can see, we did a sudo uwf status number and show port 22 allow in. So we're good with this first um, uh, firewall configuration allows us to SSH in from our Kali machine. So we're going to do SSH uh, at 10.0.3.15, which we also need to add a username. Currently it's org, uh, but I want to create a new username for myself uh, as an admin user. So I'm going to do uh, add sudo sudo add user and then you're going to put whatever name you want i'm going to use my name tuki and it's going to prompt uh, you for a password i'll go ahead and enter your password that you will like uh, on this Linux server and retype it again. You can bypass all this information or put it yourself. And now I want to make sure that I have permission right. Uh, here, just going to take a uh, load notes on the Linux server. And I added my name into it. And I'm going to check the groups of Tuki, the user, and he only has his own access. So there's no um, permission for administration permission. So I'm going to have to change that. Since org.org or org, the user, is admin user, we're going to add permission to Tuki to allow it Tuki to be a super user too. So we're going to do user mod dash a group g, uh, which is pseudo group for Tuki. And to do to make a change, you need to add pseudo to the beginning of this command. And now the permission is given to Tuki as a pseudo um, user. So to check, just check groups with your username and you can see now is Tuki plus sudo. Uh, and here we're just gonna switch user into Tuki. Um, we're gonna test to make sure we have um, a sudo command privilege. So we're going to test out sudo ls, which is no dash, which you can see it access for a password. Type in the password, and it should be blank because it was just list directory. But in this case, we know that I have pseudo permissions. And I'm going to go ahead and exit, and we're going to head over to the Kali machine.
in the Kali machine, we're going to type SSH two key at the IP address. Uh, it's going to ask for authentication because it's the first time. Type yes, type your password, and we're logged in um, through SSH. You can see here I'm testing to make sure that I'm actually in the server. Test if I have pseudo permission and who am I? This first part, we need a text editor. So we're going to do sudo app install vim to make sure I have a text editor that I'm used to. You can use nano, you can use anything else, vi. In this case, we're going to um, go into the Etsy SSH. Uh, just to check the configuration, uh, you can change the port number if you want. Um, go ahead and read through this. Right there, the per permit root login is turned off. Uh, if you want to log in, using roots you can uncomment that and it allows you to log in in roots and also at the top you can change your uh, port number if you want to change from port 22 to something else in this case i'm just going to exit And as always, make sure you have the most up-to-date for your security. So I'm doing a sudo app update and upgrade on the Linux server. It's going to ask you to uh, reboot the kernel. Just go ahead and hit OK. Uh, last few things I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the host name to MediaWiki and the host into MediaWiki. Uh, but in this case, um, this is going to be Tuki at uh, MediaWiki. I want to change the uh, org into media wiki and it won't take effect until you actually restart the system and this is where I'm going to restart the system before it takes effect.
as I went back to this uh, Linux server and I was trying to do a reboot, but you need to log in to a user. And when I was logged in, go ahead and do a shutdown, restart command, and then a reboot. You can see the system rebooted and I'm going to go back to SSH into the system, which SSH did not work. So I had to double check the Linux server to make sure it has an IP address. Um, go ahead and log back into Tuki, uh, your password, and I'm going to do IPA. Just make sure to see if I have an IP address. In this case, I don't. So I have to do sudo dh client to allow me to have a IP address. And once I run IPA, now I have an IP address. And I can try to ping google.com and I'm able to ping google.com. So it means I have internet access. If I go ahead and head back to the Kali machine, I can now SSH in and I'm in the system. All right, so this next section, uh, I'm already SSH in. I'm just doing some command to see if I can uh, see I'm inside the wiki, uh, media wiki. In this case, I'm gonna uh, do a sudo app. Install Apache. I want to make sure I have Apache 2 installed. And <clears throat> this one I'm installing Apache Maria DB server PHP. I'm doing PHP MySQL. I'm also doing lib Apache 2 uh, dash mod dash PHP. And I'm doing PHP dash XML. And also the last one will be PHP dash MB string. These are the uh, dependency that you need to be able to run uh, media wiki. After you put this command in, you're gonna put in your password. Uh, in this case, it's missing the last um, PHP. I forgot to put dash MB string. This case is just installing um, PHP MB stream. And after this was installed, I want to make sure I install everything else, the Maria DB server, PHP. And this is the part where it installs all the dependency. Once it has um, fully installed, we are going to go ahead and go to the next part. It's going to be sudo mysql secure installation.
This is where we're installing MySQL, the database. Uh, we're inside there is asking for your, us to create a password for root. Uh, go ahead, create a password for root. And this part is uh, switch Unix socket authentication. Uh, by default, you just hit enter. And it says here, do you want to change the root password? I would say no because I created my own, the one I wanted. It says remove any anonymous users. I would say yes. It says disallow root login remotely. Uh, this is a database. You don't want anyone to remotely uh, SSH into your server. So I said yes, disallow them. Uh, this one says uh, reload privilege uh, tables now. Yes. And now we have fully set up the Maria database. Uh, next here, we're going to install a couple uh, dependencies for MariaDB2. Uh, this one's going to be sudo app install php apcu, uh, also image magic. Uh, there's php dash curl and also php dash intl. Once that has installed, we're actually going to go to the website and pull in media wiki. So if you just Google media wiki download, and we're going to be at the website, it'll look something like this. And what I want to do was to get the download link, but there's a section down towards the bottom that will give you the wget command to actually pull it from the website. As you can see, it's right there. Uh, this will be the wget and the URL uh, to download the uh, zip file and put it onto the computer. So go ahead and copy that link. We're going to go back into the terminal and we're going to use the wget to be able to get the um, zip, uh, zip file into the system. Now we're able to get the zip file downloaded. As you can see, it says 100%. Uh, we're gonna make a folder uh, inside the uh, var lib, and the folder is gonna be called, or the directory is gonna be called media wiki. So using the sudo command uh, mkdir to make the folder in that directory. And this next part, we are going to extract the zip file. So we do a ls command to make sure we see the zip file there. And to uncompress it, we're going to use the tar-xvf. And the file, which is the media wiki, 
and it's gonna unzip everything. And as you can see, it unzipped it into a different folder. Uh, in this case, what we're gonna do next here is go move everything that was unzipped into that directory that we created in uh, var lib media wiki. As you can see, I did a sudo move uh, mv media wiki dash um, the star dash the star means everything and everything after. And it's going to move into the var lib media wiki. You can see I did an ls in that folder, and that was all the file that got extracted. So now moving on to the next step, we are going to uh, MySQL to create the user and the database so we can start to uh, log in. So this one we're going to do sudo MySQL to get the MySQL started. The command here we're going to do is, is going to be create user media wiki at local host. You can call this wherever you want. Um, I'm just going to use this to make it easy. So this is the user and the identified by this here is the password i'm gonna use the password root to make it easy and once you hit enter you created the user with the password of root On this next part here, we're going to create the database. So it's going to be called create database. Media wiki underscore DB. Semicolon. Um, you can call this database uh, whatever name you want. I'm just calling it media wiki. Now, we just got to give permission to the media, media wiki uh, database uh, for the user we just created. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say grant all on media wiki db underscore db dot everything, which is the star to uh, media wiki at local host. And once, uh, we hit enter, so we created the user, we created the database, and then we also created, uh, the access. Uh, you can either hit, type in exit, control C, or uh, type in buy to exit out the MySQL. So here I'm just going over the three things that we created. So I use the control C to exit, um, clear the screen. Uh, the next part here, we're going to create a, um, uh, symbolic link. So it's pseudo S, uh, pseudo LN dash S. 
uh, we're going to create the symbolic from link from var lib, uh, lib media wiki to var www dash html dash a new folder called media wiki. The reason why I want to link this is that everything that was in the media uh, media wiki at the var lib, all that is going to be linked to that specific one over there. So we don't have to copy everything from one to another. And next we're going to enable a couple of um, other dependencies that need to be turned on. Um, this one's going to be the sudo, it's going to be the MB string and the XML that we downloaded from earlier. So sudo PHP E N M O D. So kind of meaning PHP E N for enable, M O D for mod, um, the MB string, and we're also going to do the same thing for XML. Once we get those up and running that way, uh, we are going to restart Apache by using the sudo system ctl restart Apache. And then we're going to use the status one to see if it's actually restarted and up and running. As you can see, it's up and running. So it's gonna clear the screen and the next step that we're gonna do here, we're gonna um, be sure we can copy the original site configuration file into the new media wiki file. So we're gonna do sudo copy the Etsy Apache 2 site available uh, at 000-default.config. And we're just going to copy that over into the uh, media wiki uh, and call it mediawiki.config. And once that's done, uh, here we're going to edit the configuration in the uh, new copy media wiki that we just copy. So we're going to do a sudo vim etsy patchy site available slash media wiki dot config come and uh, we want to just scroll down to where it says document roots. Uh, that is where we want to adjust this last part so it knows where to look for the website that we're creating. So it's at the var slash www slash html slash wiki. And that's the new folder we created from the start. That's all we got to do in this configuration. Uh, this next step here looks like This next step here, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, enable uh, MediaWiki.config, the one that we just configured. So it's going to be sudo a2ensite, -E, then the wiki.config. Uh, this part it uh, uploaded the new configuration. It's asking us to reload Apache. But before we reload Apache, we want to disable the one uh, that's currently running, which is the uh, 000 slash default one. 
So we're going to do pseudo A2 E N. Sorry, uh, A2 D I S S I T E. And then D000 slash default.config, which disabled the original configuration. Now we can uh, do a pseudo system CTL reload patch 2 dot service. And then we're just going to check the status to make sure that it uh, has been restarted and up and running. On um, this next part here, we're actually going to make sure we allow the firewall configuration to allow internet access in and out through the port. So we want to do uh, sudo system CTO, or we do UFW system number to see what's available. But to run that, we need to do sudo. So we do sudo UFW status number and the open port is SSH, which is the one that we're using to connect in from the Kali machine. Uh, this part here, we're going to do sudo UFW allow 80 and also 443 to allow those two specific ports. Uh, port 80 is HTTP and port 443 is HTTPS. Now we're going to go check the status again. As you can see, we have port 22, 80, and 443. The one that says V6 is the uh, IPv6. So once that's completed, we're actually gonna go over to the uh, web browser. And in this web browser, we're going to take the IP address of the uh, Linux server, which was the one was 10.0.3.15. As you can see, it load up the MediaWiki logo to get started on the installation. And this is where we start the installation by hitting continue. And it does uh, all the environmental check, everything that we have configured up to this point to make sure that everything is done correctly. And we're going to hit next uh, continue. And in this part right here, we're going to uh, make sure we type in the local host. Uh, the database name will be the one that we created in MySQL. Um, here I've failed a couple of times here and then did a couple of tr troubleshooting. So when we initially started the database, when we created MySQL, uh, we created a user, um, media wiki at localhost, identified by root, uh, which was the password. That's what we actually got to put in that section. And the database was the database we created was the media wiki underscore db was the database. And the username was media wiki. And the password was root. So whatever you created on your side, that's what you got to put into the system.
this point, I was just explaining what I was just telling you um, that uh, when we created the database, it was MediaWiki and the password I had was root. And now you can see uh, we're logged in. At this point in time, we kind of need to finish this installation to download the right configuration. Uh, you can create a username here. Uh, this username is for the initial login um, login for MediaWiki to make any adjustments if you need to. I just did this as a test. And then the password has to be more than eight characters. As you can see, I have Phil to create the password for this one. But I went back and refixed it. And you get to use a password that is not commonly used. So I create one that is not commonly used. And you can see uh, this next step is to install into the uh, install the configuration so it can point back to the server. And these are all the check that I did. And we're gonna hit Next, and this is going to automatically download this um, PHP file. So in the next following step here, what we're going to do is it's going to download to the Kali machine, but we want to send it into the Linux server machine. And that's the file that was downloaded. So to do a couple step here, we uh, need to open our terminal in the Kali machine. And we're going to do this command called SCP, which is secure copy. Uh, we're going to secure copy the local host data file. But first, we actually got to go into the download folder. So at this point, we're going to do ls to see where what was listed there, which is where the file was not at. So we're going to cd home uh, into my name. And we're literally just trying to go into the downloads folder where I am. At this point, you guys probably know why. We're actually in the Linux server. Um, so that's why it wasn't working. That's why I couldn't find the download. So what we're gonna do is open a new tab and we should be able to find the download folder to be able to make the secure copy over. 
So we're going CD into so we have So we want to CD over into downloads and hit LS to see what's in there. You can see the files right there. This is where we're going to do the SCP, secure copy, the local setting.php, and we're going to type the username at the Linux server at the IP address. And you can see nothing happened. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the Linux server to see if it's there. I'm gonna CD home to the root directory, which is not there. Now I'm gonna check the user. So I'm gonna go back and relook at the IP address, make sure everything's correct. The file is not there because I actually didn't fully complete the command. So here I'm trying to see if I can locate a file. So I'm going to do the command again. And the last thing I got to do is add the sim colon at the end. Well, yeah. And there it's going to ask for my password. Now I'm going to type my password on the Linux server. And then you can see it's 100%. It got copy over. So now we do ls again. And there you go. The file is there. As you can read, it says it needs to be put into the index PHP location. Uh, once you transfer it over to the server, so we actually got to make the move that file over to that specific location. But before we do any of that, we're going to just make some uh, modification to the file. So we're going to do sudo C H O W N Chong. But before that, I was going to show you the original configure um, permissions first before we make the change. And you can see that file has its own by me, Tuki, and then group Tuki. And it has read and write, read and write permission. So we're going to change the owner of that using the sudo chown to www data will be the owner.
So it's going to be www.data, colon, semicolon. And we're going to do www-data again. So the first one is the owner. The second one is going to be the group. Uh, own all by the www data. So it can run the web server. And we're going to choose a file, which is the local settings.php. And the next change we're going to do here will be the sudo chmod. Uh, this is to change the permission. And I'm going to do 600. Zero, zero. Uh, 600 zero, zero is for read and write for the owner, and everyone else does not have any read or write permissions. And we're going to choose the file, which is the local settings.php. And I'm going to do a, a list again. You can see how the permission has changed and the ownership has changed. And the last part here is to move the file over to the correct directory. I'm going back to the terminal. Here it was um, locking up on me a little bit. So I'm going to try to get into the terminal. So this, I need an SSH back into the Linux server because it, this is not S, um, this is just the Kali Linux. So I got an SSH back in and you're going to type in your password. I'm in, and then you can see at the LS, you see the uh, file is still there and the permission is still there and is updated. And this is where I'm going to do the final move. I'm moving the file into the uh, media wiki file. So it's going to be sudo move, sudo mv. We're going to move the local setting.php file over to the var www.html and the media wiki. And it's going to ask for a password, print your password. And it's complete as far as the file get moved. And I'm going to list to make sure that the file is there. And as you can see, the local setting.php is there. Where the index.php file was too. And I'll go open. I think we're going to open a web browser, but I think in the next spot here, I am going to shut down the system so it doesn't um, break down on me. So I'm trying to restart the server, the, the Kali, and all of it.
As you can see, I restarted server Kali Linux. I had to make sure I had IP address. And at this point, uh, everything should be in the right location. I'm just gonna ping, um, just make sure I'm able to ping the server. We're good there. And I'm gonna hit just refresh. Won't work, so I'm gonna just do the IP address. So at the address bar, I'm just gonna do the IP address of the server. And there you go. It's uh, logged in and everything's working and the installation is complete. You can watch the rest where I create a username and uh, mess around a little bit. Hopefully you guys enjoy uh, this part of the installing a media wiki.